The following lesson is linked to learning outcome one, listening and speaking, and addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to make inferences and judgments and motivate with evidence. Learners should be able to interact in group discussions by expressing own ideas and opinions and listening to and respecting those of others while engaging with a range of issues such as inclusivity and power relations and environmental, ethical, social, cultural and human rights issues. Hi, in this series of lessons, we've learned that you have a right to speak and that you have a responsibility to support what you are saying with facts and evidence. These are skills we use all the time in conversation, but some people use them more formally in debates. In today's lesson, we are going to learn about holding a debate, as this is an enjoyable form of public speaking and you may like to try it. Even if you don't want to sign up for the debating team, Knowing the basics of debating will enable you to structure everyday arguments more effectively and you will also be able to follow political debates more easily. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to list the key concepts used in debating and hold a debate. To find out more about debating, we went to chat to the debating team and coach at Parktown Boys High School and we watched one of their debates in action. Their debating coach, Suren Nyker, gave us some background to the art of debating. Why is the ability to debate an important skill to develop? Because debating is something everybody does anyway. And we argue every day about mundane things. Is Queen a good singer? Is Queen a good rock group? Is is um, winter better than summer? Is uh, a co-ed school better than a non-co-ed school? We argue every day in everyday life. So if we are able to do it in a structured way and able to think logically, then obviously it's an important life skill. And if you're going to go into a profession which lends itself to that kind of thinking or that kind of skill, then it also helps. Most debaters are attracted to professions like journalism and law, acting, drama things which require you to express yourself but in a, in a logically structured way. What are some of the advantages of taking part in debates? There's good networking that takes place. When we go on camps, for example, we you know, stay with them, we interact, we bond in their socials. That's on a more social level. But from debating itself, it's just expanding your knowledge, expanding your horizons and expanding your thinking skills. So intellectual edification is one of the most precious upshots of debating, I think. What skills do you need to debate effectively? Firstly, you've got to be very passionate about it because it's extremely time consuming. It's not a matter of just coming for a meeting once a week for an hour or two. It's, it's extremely draining. It takes an average six to eight hours to prepare for one debate. And that's um, being somewhat liberal. It takes a lot more to prepare for a more in-depth debate. You've got to be very knowledgeable. You've got to be very witty very intelligent and you must be able to think on your feet. Debating is a competitive team activity and just as with soccer, rugby or netball, at school level there are leagues where competitions are organized between schools. As with any other sport, there are also terms and rules that debaters have to know and obey. The format and rules of debating that we are going to discuss in this lesson follow the world schools debating style. This is the current form of debating used in schools in South Africa and abroad. However, there are other styles of debating that you may also want to try. The first term that you need to know in debating is motion. The motion is the topic of the debate. It is a statement of opinion or a point of view which is stated as if it is fact. Teams will either support or oppose the motion. So, for example, a debate motion could be school uniforms are old-fashioned and have no place in the modern education system. Or, history is in the past and is of no use to learners today. There are two teams in every debate. The proposing team agrees with the motion and the opposing team disagrees with the motion. So, those are the two sides, but how does the debate actually work? Each team must try and convince the audience, known as the floor, and the judges, called adjudicators, that their point of view is correct, 
and that they have provided the most convincing argument, whether they personally agree with the motion or not. To ensure that the debate is run fairly and that the rules are adhered to, there is a chairperson. Here's the chairperson of the debate that we went to see. Um, please do address all points through me as Master Chair and do not make more than one point at a time. After the floor debate, we'll have the third speaker for the proposition, then the third speaker for the opposition. After that, we'll have the reply speaker for the opposition and the reply speaker for the proposition. I now call upon the first speaker of the proposition, Daniel Scher. If the team knows about the topic in advance, then they will be able to research the topic thoroughly, identify key ideas, and gather relevant evidence to support their side of the argument. In the case of an impromptu debate, teams will each get a short amount of time prior to debating to quickly come up with their key arguments, so an impromptu debate relies heavily on general knowledge. So once the preparation is done, how does the debate work? Well, each team has three speakers, and in the first part of the debate, they speak for eight minutes each. The proposing team's first speaker goes first, followed by the opposing team's first speaker. Then, the proposing team's second speaker speaks, followed by the opposing team's second speaker, and finally, the proposing team's third speaker and the opposing third speaker have their turns. Whilst the teams need to work together to present a coherent case, each speaker has a clear role in the debate. The first speaker of each team introduces the team and provides a brief outline of the case that the team will be presenting. He or she will define the terms of the topic, outline the team's point of view, and explain why they believe their position is correct. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, fellow debaters and adjudicators. The topic my team and I are proposing tonight is this House would refuse non-emergency foreign aid to countries which do not actively promote women's rights. My team consists of myself, Daniel Schur, laying the foundations of our arguments as first speaker, Gavin Owen expanding and reinforcing these as second speaker, while Dominic Gumede will summate. After the first speaker of the proposing team has started the debate, the first speaker of the opposing team explains the important differences in the two teams' cases, outlines the opposition case, and may present a counter-argument. Right, good evening to the House at large. Tonight, my team and I will be opposing the motion this House would refuse non-emergency aid to countries who do not actively promote women's rights. Our, we accept the proposition's definition. After one speaker from each team has spoken, the second speakers get their opportunity. The second speakers from both teams build on the main points made by the first speakers and give more background research and evidence to support the team's point of view. The second speaker of the proposing team may offer some defense against what the first speaker of the opposing team said. And the second speaker of the opposing team may also argue against what the first two proposing speakers have said. It is then the turn of the third speakers from each team. The third speakers from both sides summarize their team's main points and try to argue that the other team's points are weak or invalid. By this stage of the debate, very little new information is being introduced. Instead, the key points are being emphasized the, and the speakers are trying to prove that their argument is stronger. After all speakers have spoken once, the first or second speaker for each side gives a reply speech with the negative or opposing reply going first, and the affirmative or proposing team going second. Whilst each speaker's first speech lasts eight minutes, the reply speeches are four minutes each. Now this is the format that a debate follows. However, participants in the debate may speak when it is not actually their turn. If a participant wants to ask a question or make a comment, whilst the member of the other team is speaking, then he or she will raise what is known as a point of information. Here is an example. Then economic assistance in the form of aid of cannot... Yes. If non-emergency aid is so, is so detrimental, then why would countries be boogied into accepting it? If you were to allow me to illustrate why it is detrimental, you will see. The points of information help to make a debate exciting.
and they really test if a speaker can argue well under pressure. However, they need to be treated with some caution. Therefore, by not, by not having funding, they, they have to then abide to conditions given to them. Sir. No, thank you. The person who is speaking does not have to respond to a point of information and can choose which questions or comments to allow. However, if the speaker doesn't accept any points of information, he or she will appear cowardly, whereas accepting too many may make the speaker lose his or her opportunity to build a complete case. The people raising the points of information also need to be careful. If they ask too many trivial questions or make frivolous statements, they will lose points for wasting time. But if they don't challenge the opposing team at all, then it will seem as if they are incapable of presenting a strong challenge. Some debating styles limit the number and duration of points of information. So if you are going to take part in a debate, make sure you familiarize yourself with the rules. Some debates also allow members of the audience or floor to ask questions. At the end of the debate, the adjudicators will decide who the winner of the debate is. They make this decision based on a number of factors, including the content that was used, the style of the debate, and the strategy that the speakers have employed. I think we had a nice debate where there was quite a bit of engagement, where some good examples, some good arguments happened on both sides and we awarded the debate to the opposition. The adjudicators should not be influenced by how they feel about a particular topic and instead should consider the contributions of each team member and the overall performance of the team. So now you know a little bit more about the structure of a debate, let's meet Dominique, a learner who participates in debates, to find out a little bit more about preparing for and participating in debating. What are the most important things to remember when you're writing your debate speech? I think what's highly important is uh, to remember always your topic, uh, the stance in which your team has taken uh, towards that topic, uh, how you plan on showing that your view is um, superior to the opposition in that topic, and also trying, trying then to, to think of what the topic would say in uh, rebuttal to your speech, and making sure that uh, you try to cover all angles or all aspects of the speech as not to be caught unawares about um, a certain issue or a certain aspect of your speech. And obviously to be well prepared and to be learned about the topic. What do you think you should remember when you're standing up to make your speech? I think um, delivery is extremely important. You must um, look up, project your voice, be extremely confident. Um, hand gestures are, are fine, but still also Contain yourself. Um, you can't uh, be overly dramatic because then that um, hampers your speech. So it's a fine balance between uh, confidence, projection, and obviously content, which is the um, major influencing factor in your speech. What are the benefits of participating in debating? Well, I've always seen myself as a liberal thinker, someone that can um, see things from an um, uh, objective point of view. And uh, I've always felt that uh, debating has been something that I've enjoyed um, discussing an issue from both sides and, and being able to come up with a, a clear solution uh, f from that type of uh, situation. What I plan on doing uh, after school is actually studying to be a lawyer. So doing something like debating uh, helps sharpen my, my skill and, and also helps in informing arguments and in, in my future profession, obviously when, when I'm faced with uh, scenarios where I do have to argue a case or so forth, uh, that will be a great skill to me. I think debating is extremely important in developing a healthy democracy. Um, because uh, within a democracy, everyone has a voice and, and has the ability to, to voice their opinion. So they, they need to be able to think uh, logically and uh, concisely about issues and be able to have a structured way in which to address um, the, these issues and a forum in which to, to speak about these issues. What I can say about a debating society is that not only does it promote logical thought, but it's a way in which they get to interact with their peers and, and a way in which uh, they, they get to um, 
receive information from uh, different perspectives, to be able to look at, at things objectively rather than subjectively. It, it makes them a more liberal and balanced person, per se. I hope by now you have got quite a good idea of the rules and skills that go into a debate and the benefits of participating in debates. If there isn't a debating team at your school, perhaps you can use what you have learned in this lesson and hold a debate in class. You'll have an opportunity to do this with today's task. In this lesson, we presented two possible motions that you could debate. Your task is to hold a debate on one of these motions, or a motion of your own, following the format of a debate discussed in this lesson. School uniforms are old-fashioned and have no place in a modern education system. Or, history is in the past and is of no use to learners today. Using the skills of debating doesn't mean you have to be in a formal debating situation. It just means that you are able to take a stand on one side or the other of an issue and you defend your argument. But remember the key to a debate is that both sides get to have their say. You might not agree with the opposition, but they must be given their chance to speak. Join us next time for the last lesson in this series when we will look at ways of challenging ideas. See you then. Mm -hmm.